Welcome back to Great Day Washington. In study of the history of African Americans in this country, we often focus on cultural impact, but don't necessarily always look at the economic impact. However, our next guest does. Uh, she's the author of the book, The History of the Black Dollar. Welcome, Angel Rich. Hi, thank Hi. you so much for having me. What made you want to start researching this side of the African American history? Yes, well, sort of long story short, as I was doing a bunch of rereading of black history books, I came across some information that said that blacks were making 67 cents on the dollar during Harriet Tubman days, and she created a protest to refuse to receive wages in order to equate, create equality mm -hmm. amongst equal pay. Um, right now, in 2019, we're still making 67 cents on the dollar. Oh, wow. So it hasn't improved. Exactly. And I wanted to understand and share what history had happened in between. So when researching the book, um, what stood out to you the most? What was what's a little big surprising tidbit that you think nobody would know and that you didn't know? That the first Orchard House was started by a black person. Oh, that okay. uh, because we were not allowed to eat cattle and things like right. that, they started diving into the water and they discovered oysters. Really not sure how they knew to do that. Maybe <laughs> in Africa, I'm really not certain. Um, and then they started selling them. And the first oyster house was in Rhode Island, started by a black couple. So they became their own entrepreneurs and, and starting whatever they saw a need. Yes. And they took advantage of it. And that was actually very uh, early on in slavery. Uh, in the beginning, you could buy your freedom and then go off. So it was it was actually very early on in history that black people started creating businesses and I felt like that was very interesting information. Yeah, because you're hearing kind of the history of our country and the, like we said, the cultural impact, but there's so many of those people that really started to pave the way economically. Absolutely. Uh, I also found out that Booker T. Washington had a book called Negroes in Business in 1907. I am one of his biggest fans, and I had never even heard of that book. Oh, wow. So I found it interesting that the economic history was sort of conveniently neglected from our black history, and I felt as though everyone across the country reads the diary of Anne Frank, mm -hmm. but there is no book that provides you with the experience of a, of a black slave or even someone going through Jim Crow that's mandated across the country. So our goal is to have this book um, as the black history book and as the American history book right. integrated in all schools across America. How can we be on the same page if we're not reading from the same book? What an eye-opening experience, not just for you, but for us <laughs> as, as, a, as a culture, as a nation. So you've got the book going, but you are a busy, busy businesswoman. Yes. You understand money apparently better than a lot of us. <laughs> um, but you have found some really unique and creative ways to teach about money. What, how's the business going? What's, what's the latest? Yeah, so I actually originally wrote the book to fund my company. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Smart woman right there. <laughs> For real. Um, where we design financial literacy education technology games. Oh, um, who doesn't love a good game? Of course. <laughs> it's actually the number one education technology game in 14 countries, top five in 40 countries. And the game is called Credit Stacker. Uh, similar to Candy Crush, you swap around credit types to pay off your debt, achieve a high credit score, and learn from the multiple choice questions. It's completely free on Google Play and iOS. 60 countries, 21 languages, and it's been named the best financial literacy product in the country by the White House and Department of uh, Education as well. Credit stacker. Yes, okay. yes. Oh, I'm downloading that one because I need some help in that area. But yes. you also have something big just Yes, happened. so I'm so share? excited to announce that I've finally become what we call a unicorn. And that means that you are a black woman that has raised over a million dollars. Um, I'm now the 37th black woman in the world to do this in the past seven years in the tech industry, uh, coming from the startup space. And it's exhilarating. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely exhilarating. You know, to put that into perspective, um, that's less than one per state in the last oh, seven wow. years, yeah. you know? And so um, when you really think about that, only 0.02% uh, of funding go to black women. So for me to accomplish this, I'm really excited. And, you know, it's 9-11. It's I went to Fort Meade High School. Mm. We just became a U.S. military partner, and we'll be going on the Fort Meade homepage. So it's been a very exciting journey with these games. I bet it has. Well, congratulations to you, and thank you for educating us and helping us to understand this a little bit more. Where can people go to find more about you? Absolutely. So you can come to my book signing. Yes. Um, 
tomorrow, tomorrow night. September 12th at Mahogany Books. You can also download Credit Soccer on Google Play and iOS and follow me on Instagram at AngelRich27. Thank you for being so amazing. You're Definitely. awesome, Angel. Definitely. Should I get a book? Yes. Get a book? And you can buy the book on Amazon. Thank you. Yes. We'll be back with more and right after more. this. Yes. I love this.